hi everyone welcome back to my youtube channel my name is aisha if you're an existing subscriber thank you for coming back and if you're a new subscriber welcome welcome here we talk about books and being an international student so this is going to be the first video please ignore that sound i don't know where that sound is coming from but please ignore that sound we are going to discuss six top things that i think every international student should know if they're thinking of going to study in the UK or in any other country in Europe or in Western country, honestly. So I'm going to be sharing some of the things I experienced and some of the tips that I think would be useful for anyone that is also coming, especially during this pandemic. So for those of you that don't already know, I came to the UK in September 2020 during the lockdown. <laughs> Keep in mind that this is my perspective, so don't take it ukline and sinka take it with a pinch of salt i'll be walking through six tips like i mentioned earlier whether spending money work and academic life balance your first critical essay utilizing available resources and asking for help i've watched a couple of this type of videos and these are some of the things that i think some of those videos didn't touch on that people would find useful so we're going to be starting off with the weather so when i first came to the uk the weather was I think it was in the autumn. Yes, it was in the autumn. It was September and it was in the autumn. So it wasn't too cold. It wasn't warm. It was just like really nice. Autumn is my favorite um, time of the year. It's so nice. So I was just like chill and everything. And all of a sudden in like November, December, the weather changed. Like it was so drastic. I mean, I knew that it was going to be winter and it would be different and it would be cold, but nothing prepared my body for the kind of cold. If you're like me and you've lived like 20 plus years in a tropical region like Nigeria, your body may react to the change in weather in ways that you don't expect. Like winter is not just about wearing jacket and you're fine. It's so different, especially if you're not used to it. So I'm going to list a couple of things that affected for me. So first of all, your overall mood. Seasonal depression usually happens in winter. Everybody knows this. Like at least everybody has stays in, in a cold region knows this. You get seasonal depression it's basically where everyone is just sad <laughs> personally for me my overall mood was affected because aside from seasonal depression i was just always waking up angry like for no reason i would just be angry like all day long just anger it was too much then second thing is your circadian rhythm like your sleep and wake cycle because the days are shorter and the nights are like extra long it affects your wake and sleep cycle or at least it affected my wake and sleep cycle especially because i'm a muslim that prays five times a day and our prayer follows the rise and setting of the sun another thing that winter affected was my menstrual cycle if you menstruate your circadian rhythm affects your menstrual cycle so when you have a messed up circadian rhythm you automatically have a messed up menstrual cycle and what that means is that you have prolonged PMS. Anybody that gets PMS knows that it can be really terrible, especially if your PMS affects your mood. So that also contributed to my anger that was experiencing <laughs> that was experiencing during my first winter. Last but not the least, obviously your productivity. So if all of these things are affected, your sleep, your mood, even your menstrual cycle, everything is affected, then your productivity, your viral productivity, your academic demands and like just day-to-day -day activities will be affected. Now I'm going to be listing some of the things that helped me that I think might help you also overcome these challenges. Arm yourself with nutrients, like nutrients help you when winter sets in. It's just everybody's always talking about it. Take your vitamin D. So just get very good multivitamins that contain iron, vitamin D, vitamin C, zinc, just basic well rounded multivitamins and put them near your bedside or on your desk so that you make sure that you take it every day after meals at the very least your nutrients are up to date your nutrient levels are okay and you're able to like walk with seasonal depression from that angle another mistake that i made was to give in to the nigerian in me that goes to bed wearing flimsy light clothes i left the walk of warmth to my eater and i lived in an accommodation with horrible eaters horrible eater so what I would advise is when you get here, go to Primark and get this like Primark has this really nice fleecy pajamas and like fleece, fleecy socks and stuff. Get them and whenever you're going to bed, just wear your fleecy pajamas, wear your fleecy socks and just go to bed. I promise you, your eater doesn't have to do a lot of work and you wake up like a baby. 
and the third thing is to get a bed eater or an extra small eater you know i said earlier that the accommodation that i was living in when i first came they had like central eating and it was horrible they would control our eating from the main wherever the country is i don't know where the country is if you live in a place like that get a bed eater so your bed is always warm even if they do not sense with their central eating and or get extra eaters i'll put a picture of the small eater opposite on the screen so just get one of those and please don't forget to get an air diffuser when you get any of this eating like if you whether you have central eating your accommodation or you're getting a bed eater or you're getting the small one make sure you get an air diffuser because there are so many times that i went to bed with my eating on like blasting full and i would wake up choking and gasping for hair because whenever eating is on oxygen is taken away from that space relatively easier so make sure you get an air diffuser so that you know oxygen is going back into the air and that thing is to try to sleep at regular times it is very easy for you to want to go to bed early especially because like you get dark by 4 pm so if you're going to go to bed by 4 pm what are you going to do for the day there are some of my classes that started by 4 pm so obviously you can't go to bed but anyway make sure that you have you try to regulate your sleeping and waking pattern the alarm works see your phone alarm would work just make sure your phone is not beside your bed they would work put set as many alarms as you want but just make sure that you go to bed around the same time and wake up around the same time and last but not the least monitor your mood and your menstrual cycle so if you menstruate make sure that you keep a record of how you feel your menstrual cycle when you get your period see because at least it helps you balance things so you know that when your menstrual cycle is getting longer it's not because of something you did or something wrong with your body it's because of the weather because it does affect it and you don't want to have that extra anxiety of oh something is wrong with you that's why you're not getting your period because i did get that and it added to my stress so the next thing on the list is spending money and spending money is going to include the banking process clothes spending money on clothes food outings and miscellaneous so that's what I'll try to work with. I made a lot of mistakes. <laughs> I made a lot of mistakes in my banking. To be fair, the country was on lockdown. Things were locked. And the internet was not providing a lot of accurate information. Or at least the internet was not providing a lot of information that worked well with pandemics and lockdown at the time. So with banks, hopefully we don't go into another lockdown before you come for your studies. Um, but make sure that when you get to the UK, you open a traditional bank. I can't. Because <laughs> me, I went to open the digital bank. <laughs> digital bank. I went to open the digital bank. But anyway, you would need a lot of documents for that. Basically, you need your passport, your BRP, and you would need your proof of address. The mistake that I made here was I was using <laughs> I was using bank statement from my digital bank as my proof of address while submitting my application see they were rejecting it because you're a student why are you using a digital bank bank statement as your proof of address so when you want to open a traditional bank go directly to your school collect the proof of address issued by your university it sounds so easy now but it affected my life a lot like two months ago, i was running around elta skater but anyway lockdown jjc that was what happened it was lockdown and i made a mistake so once you open a traditional bank that you can keep all your money in open a digital bank also so banks like monzo make sure that you keep all your important monies and a lot of money keep them in your traditional banks if you have like spending money money you spend weekly daily put it in your digital bank the reason why i'm saying this is that most of the digital banks they have inter user interfaces or like features that allows you monitor your spending i use both type of banks but monzo allows me to track my spending basically so i put all my important money in my traditional banks and i use my digital bank for my day-to-day -day spending keeping your major money in traditional bank allows you to be safe from the nonsense that happens with digital banks sometimes but also using digital banks for your daily weekly or monthly spending would allow you track your spending habits one other interesting mistake that i made was to focus on buying stuff for cheap rather than buying quality stuff for cheap so i was always looking for cheap deals rather than looking for quality stuff that just happened to be on deals primark is a very good store for like students if you're on a budget primark is where to get your clothes 
but they don't always have good quality. Primark does not always have good quality. When I came, I got majority of my stuff from them. And Primark is good. You can use them for like lounge wear or like pieces that you know you just want to wear around but if you want to buy long term pieces pieces you would wear for a long time try to expand your budget just enough that you can try other high street brands that have good quality or better quality not good just better quality make sure you use your student discount always if you are going to the store go with your student id card mango has student discount new look has student discount a lot of all these ice street brands have student discount so always go shopping with your student id you buy from sales you buy good quality item you buy during sales you use your student discount if it is online open a student bin account and get your student discount you don't want to be buying low quality stuff because you are trying to look for discount sales when you can buy good quality at discounted prices another extra tip when it comes to clothes please get a fabric shaver see i cannot over i cannot overestimate the importance of a fabric shaver the moment i got a fabric shaver my life just changed when you get clothes that are not of very good quality like you get knits or something like that like this one i'm wearing now they start like bringing out lint we call it ogu we call it ogu in my language and then it makes them look like old. So what you want to do is get a fabric shaver and shave that wool off. <laughs> Take your clothes from a zero to a hundred because you don't want to be wearing around with our clothes. And you don't want to just discard the clothes just because it has lint all over it. Another mistake that I made was that I was always buying stuff religiously from Tesco. I had, I had one Tesco very close to my accommodation. And I would buy stuff from them because again it was during lockdown. I didn't want to go too far. I didn't want to get corona. One thing I would advise is Audi and Lidl are your best friends. Like, see, you can't go wrong with just just find the nearest Lidl, nearest Audi, buy your stuff there. The next best places I like to shop is BM, Asda, and Morrison's. Surprisingly, Morrison's, you know, they have nice cheap stuff some of some of the time. So Lidl, Audi, your best bet. If you don't have any of those around you, then BNM, Asda, Morrison's. If you're African like me and you like going to like African shops and stuff, make sure that you only restrict your your visit to those African shops once a month. See, because you, you get like nostalgic and you want to buy all of your stuff, like just buy everything. Many of them are expensive because most of those things, you have to import them anyway. So for Alton's, when I first came, we were in lockdown, so I didn't really had to go out like that. People were not really inviting me to stuff. Most of the get together that I had with some of the new friends I made were in like my accommodation, their accommodation. So we didn't have to really spend money, but obviously things are different now. So what you want to do is budget your out and see, budget it with the way you budget every other thing. Budget your clothes, budget your food, budget your housing. This country is like shiny. <laughs> Event is very shiny, so you want to like do everything, buy everything, do everything, buy everything. It's very easy to fall into overspending. It is very easy, even for those of us that are like really strict with our budgeting. Go to restaurants that give student discounts. Yes, there are restaurants that give student discounts. Ask them, do you give student discounts? You can go with your ID card, they'll give you a student discount and check the receipts. If you don't have money to pay the service charge, don't pay it, it's not by force. You just you can pay service charge if you want, but if you don't have money, you're a student, don't pay the service charge. If somebody invites you to go out, you're paying for your food. <laughs> you're paying for your food unless they explicitly say so. You know, I was telling you earlier that this country is very shiny. I always tell my friend, like everything is buy, 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 buy. Because it's so easy to buy stuff, it's so easy to order online. So cop that buying spirit. Don't buy what you don't need immediately. If you don't need something, don't buy it. Except on like Black Friday sales or like huge sales when very expensive things become really discounted. Don't buy what you don't need immediately. And need is different from want. You want something doesn't mean that you need something. Ignore the noise. <laughs> Ignore the noise and my friends are also... <laughs> but yes, you want something doesn't mean that you need something. So before you buy a non-essential item, ask yourself, do I want this or do I really need this? 
if you don't have the immediate answer to that, wait two or three days and then answer your question. So, the next on the list is work academic life balance. Now, before I get into this section, I recognize my privilege and I understand that not everybody has this privilege and not everybody can afford to make the same decisions that I make. So, take this advice with a pinch of salt. It is so easy to fall into the Ozo culture, especially when you are from Nigeria. When I got here, like a couple of people that knew that I was here were like asking me, oh, what is the work scene like, blah, blah, blah. I remember that I used to feel kind of like inadequate that I don't know what the work, I didn't know what the work scene was like, like the Ozu scene, what it was like. And the reason why I didn't know a lot about the Ozu scene was because I was working for my uni. So I didn't really know anything about like external work, basically. We were literally like experiment students for studying during the pandemic, my set. The country was in lockdown, there was no vaccine in sight. And my parents always say this thing, it's a Yoruba proverb. They always say that, Omoti yeoba sin to sin, kukin dae bweni, which loosely translates to, a child whose mother is in close by, does not nurse an open wound behind them, like on in their back or something. That's the loose translation, basically. And what that essentially means is, me that, Aisha, you don't have any family in the UK, you don't know anybody in the UK. You have to be careful and you can't afford to take risk with your health especially during the pandemic because if you die it is not compulsory for everybody to do also culture it is not com- you don't have to feel pressure to go into that also culture that oh yeah in the uk you should be hustling and i'm saying this because there are so many people or there were so many people like me that you know people were like i'm marrying them like ah you should have started working i should have started working during the pandemic for god's sake so what I personally did for work was that I registered with my union on a platform that they had, which was called Jobs for Students. So basically, you go on there, they post jobs for students, and you apply for the jobs, and if you get it, you get you start working and you get paid. And, they are, and the uni pays you well. I think the list that the uni was paying at the time was like £9.50p. You can do any work, and they won't pay you less than £9. So I got a student ambassador role, I did some other ambassadorial roles, I did some writing roles for the uni. Working through this platform gave me the necessary UK work experience and I was also able to make extra income and focus on my academic goals 100%. So now if you are paying your tuition, you cannot avoid the also culture. But what you can do though is try not to fall too deep into it to the point that you forget the main reason why you are here which is to study. And the reason why I say this is that it is so easy to fall into. But remember that you're on, you're on a student visa, and if you don't pass your degree, you cannot get your postgraduate study visa. I'll do a separate video for that one, postgraduate study visa. Also, please, I beg the name of God, don't work more than 20 hours per week during academic damn time, please. I know that there are so many people that do that. But try as much as possible not to work more than 20 hours a week during term time you can wait till your school goes on vacation or something and then work as many hours as you want but during term time try to give time to your own academics too because i mean getting a good degree as an international student here would in a way help you get a good paying job that might sponsor your visa like full time after the postgraduate study visa the reason why i say don't work over time is that there are some people that get their postgraduate study visa denied because they've worked over time. There are people that will tell you that, no, don't worry, I, I worked over time and I got my professor this time. See, there are different officers that undo cases for different people's visa application. If your visa falls into the hand of a case officer that does not have sense or is not as forgiving, then you get your visa denied because of how much. So the next tip that I'll be sharing is your first critical essay. Now, this bit is quite interesting because there are many MSc students, especially, that struggle with academic writing when they first come to countries like the UK. If you are coming from a country like Nigeria, where in Nigerian public universities, <laughs> academic writing is not a thing. Because I write book reviews, so I have some experience with being critical with writing. So I put that skill into my first academic essay and I thought I had nailed it. I so, I so thought I had nailed it. Until my result came back and I got a 68. Which isn't bad to be honest because I told my um, tutor at that time and she was like no that's a good score but I know what I wanted for my degree and 68 wasn't going to give me what I wanted. After I had felt sad blah 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 I checked my feedback. 
So when I went to my feedback and studied it, I decided to take what we call the academic study skills courses in my uni. Now, please don't joke with these courses. These courses are basically extracurricular courses that target different things and they're usually aimed at international students. Don't joke with these courses. Enroll for them as often, as many times as you can. Most universities in the UK have it. They might call it different names, but it's basically just extracurricular um, courses that would help you with so many things, including academic writing. So some of the courses we had that I did was critical thinking class, a how to write good paragraph class. We did how to reset for your first essay class. We did a how to link ideas class. We did so many classes. After I went to these classes and I studied everything they gave us, I never got a 60 some, 60 some, 60 was no longer my portion. I did not get 60 anything. So the tip here is enroll to those academic study skill extracurricular classes in your uni. Make sure you attend the ones that are tailored towards the area of help that you need. If you need help with your critical writing skills, attend the classes that are tailored towards it and ask for feedback i'm not even kidding if you get back your first academic essay and you don't like the score or something and you need feedback and they don't give you feedback email that tutor the tutor for that course and ask them for feedback because they need to give you when they ask for feedback anyway just make sure you give them enough time to be able to do that now the last but not the least is asking for help See, you did not leave your own country to move to a new country and then be doing stuff ahead, be doing stuff suffering Olympics. If you are paying tons of thousands of pounds to get a degree, you deserve all the help you can get. So ask for help when you need help. Please, I am see, I am begging the name of God to ask for help when you need help. If you need help with anything, ask your uni. They are literally the ones sponsoring your visa to be here. If your uni does not give you cars, you can't come to the UK or go to any other country really if your uni does not sponsor you. So ask anything you need help with from your uni. If you want to get a steady job, a part-time job outside, and you don't know where to look, you don't know what to do, contact your career service in your department. They might ask you that, oh, have you done a couple of internet searches? And you're like, yeah, I've done a couple of internet searches. But I feel like I'm doing it all wrong. Or maybe you've applied to a couple of jobs and they've not gotten back to you. Contact your career service. Ask them to look over your CV. If you don't know where to find jobs and you searched online, you can't find anything that fits your skill sets, go to your student or your student union. Talk to student representatives. Tell them that you are looking for this job. This is the type of job you want to do. If you've written your first academic essay and you want somebody to proofread it, instead of spending £50 to give it to somebody to read it for you, contact your department. They will have like peer assistants that would help you with like things that for uni but you can't talk to your tutor about because i remember that when i needed help with writing my proposal for my project i contacted some of the pay assistants and they had a meeting with me and put me through all of these things so if you need help with proofreading contact one of them your uni would have something like that if your uni does not have contact the student up they would know where to go if you want to download the ms package or you want to download the software for your course or something Instead of going to use money to buy it, contact your uni. In conclusion, don't stress yourself unnecessarily and don't spend money on things that does not need to be that does not need money to be spent on. Come to the end of this video. If you watched up until this point, please comment the clap emoji. <laughs> Hope you've enjoyed this video so far. If you have any more questions that or anything I didn't touch on, leave the questions in the comment section and i'll try my best to get to them don't forget to like subscribe and share and also turn on the notification bell so that you know when i upload a new video <laughs> thank you for watching and enjoy your weekend and i'll see you in my next video bye